Anubis. Talk about devolutions. I can't believe Umbreon is in finals. Um, okay, so here's the deal. The camera didn't finish warming up. Um, here's the deal. Today I want to talk about the 2019 Pokemon World Championships final. Um, the reason that I want to talk about this final in particular is, well, there's two reasons. The number one is that um, it's a phenomenal match. It's really, really, really good play from both players. Um, and it's a world's final, of course, so I do like to feature these in the channel occasionally. Um, additionally, this final is especially interesting because, uh, to my knowledge, unless I, you know, just off the top of my head, but I'm fairly certain, this is the farthest any evolution has ever gotten uh, in the world championships, ever. Um, Vaporeon got top four. I don't think Vaporeon got second in 2009, I'll have to, I'll have to guess, um, or I'll have to double check that. But even a Pokemon like Sylveon, which is kind of notorious for being the best evolution, kind of by a, a long shot, um, even Sylveon's never made it past or made it all the way to the finals. And so I think it's really interesting that Umbreon is the one to do it. And I do want to talk about it because number one, um, we've been used, you know, evolutions on the channel before. And number two, um, I think it's really, really just interesting. Um, I'm going to tell you in advance that I'm going to get second. And the reason why I want to tell you that is because um, I want to show you these team reports. Both these players wrote really, really uh, strong or really, really good team reports. Uh, Hirofumi is the runner up. He uses Umbreon. Um, and then Naoto. Uh, wins the world championships uh, with his team. Now, something that I want to talk about kind of going into this match, I didn't talk to either of these players before recording this, so I'm sure they could offer so much insight, so much perspective on what um, on what was going through their heads, uh, and even, they, we're, no, we're very lucky that they've shared these reports, so that I'll link these in the description down below, so you can check them out yourself if you want to do a more thorough run. Um, I do want to talk about kind of the, we can talk about Umbreon, but I also want to talk about Naoto, because I think that's a really interesting story. Um... So, uh, basically, here's what I think is cool about it. Naoto uses almost this exact team at the Japan National Championships and finishes, I believe, top eight, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, he runs almost the entirely same team with a change of Feeny Ran Skull instead of Icy Wind um, on the World Championships. Uh, however, it's the exact same team. Now, this is, like, other than that. So, this is very interesting, in my opinion, because normally World is kind of the... It's thought of as kind of like the pinnacle of innovation. Like, if you've had any good ideas that you've been saving all format, you use them at Worlds, right? It's kind of like this last hurrah in a lot of in a lot of ways, and there's no incentive to hold anything back for Worlds. And so because of that, players um, often, you know, will uh, will you bust out their most creative strategies. And although it varies metagame to metagame, um, this is a big deal because, like, in certain metagames, innovation is rewarded, and certain things, other things are rewarded. Like, in 2015, for example, the teams that did the best um, were teams that used relatively standard Pokemon, whereas the same can't necessarily be true... Uh, it couldn't, can't necessarily be said in 2017. 2018, um, the team that got second was really cool. The team that got first was interesting as well. So... Basically, like, different world championships favor different things, but in general, people try to be innovative. Um, so to bring the exact same team as, you know, something that you use at Japan Nationals, it takes a lot of gut, um, but it also is a really smart call. And I'm going to explain why I think it was such a smart, smart call. Um, the report is relatively short. They give the calcs here. Um, talks about Dragon Claw. Uh, talks about Culberberry, which is cool. We had Cassie Berry. Um on our Lunal Out Worlds this year, but yeah, I really like Colberberry. This is also very bulky. Here's the Calcs. Um, Mega Salamence is kind of standard. Feeny, relatively standard. Um, Incineroar with uh, AV, which is standard at the time, and then Rocky and Stack Attack, which was cool, but um, yeah, it's, it functioned as, a, as, a, as an attacker. The tournament, or the report is really great. I recommend you read through it in um, in depth. He also talks about the finals here if you want to read about um, yeah, like the about how things went, but Something that I want to say about this team and why I think it's so cool. I know this isn't the Embryon team. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, in a format like 2019, and this is something that I personally did not realize, there were a lot of different archetypes that were viable. Unlike 2016, which you might compare 2019 to, um, but unlike 2016, where there was pretty much like one main archetype and then a couple like kind of more like lesser used ones, there was only a handful. It was like... Um, going into Worlds, there was Xerneas, Xerneas Groudon, and the variations of that, that was the primary one in 2016. Dual Primals in 2016, and, like, some Rayogre, right? And there was a couple other niche things, like X-Ray had some play, which is Xerneas Rayquaza. Uh, but other than that, like, you weren't going to see that many Pokemon, out, that many cores of two outside of those. Uh, whereas in 2019, Solvaleo wins Japanese Nationals, you know, Rayogre wins uh, North American Internationals, um, Yveltal does well. Uh, there's all kinds of Xerneas are doing well, including Xern Ogre, Xern Ray. Um, Xerneas Lunala is an archetype, uh, Solgaleo compared with Groudon, Solgaleo is paired with Rayquaza, 
Uh, there's a whole, like, Zygarde is seeing some play, though not really that much by Ultra Series, actually. Yeah, I take that one back, not Zygarde. But, um, Rayquaza is paired with a bunch of different Pokemon. Uh, Ray Lunala is picking up a little bit. That was something that was used. That's something I personally brought to Worlds, right? So there's all these different archetypes. Um, and in a format like that, like, I think a mistake that I personally made going into Worlds was I tried to treat it like 2016. You know, it's, it's kind of an easy comparison to make. You're dealing with restricted Pokemon again. Like, 2016 was the last time we had restricted Pokemon. Yo, Moons, thank you for subscribing. Join the sub-discord. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, oh, I'm streaming? Okay, this is a live video. Thank you very much, cats. Uh, okay, we're just gonna turn this one into a recording, so you guys can watch the recording live, I guess. Well, that's embarrassing. Okay, please don't, wait, I'm turning off the notification. I really thought I hit record. Um, where's notification? Sub alert. Okay. Okay, well, this is gonna be a live, a live video. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I was gonna do this eventually, I guess. Um, I'm so dumb. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll just continue as if I'm actually recording, and then I'll download it. Okay, you guys get a preview. <clears throat> anyway, what was I saying? Okay, so in a metagame like 2019, it's it's not fair to compare it to, um, it's not fair to compare it to 2016, because unlike 2016, where there was only a couple archetypes, uh, in 2019, we had a but like, so many that it was kind of impossible to cover for everything, and so in a format like that, where you're going to have good matchups, and you can't always have good matchups, right? But in a format like 2019, you, like, really couldn't always have good matchups. Um, so in this kind of format, in my opinion, something that was a really good call was something that the players were comfortable with. And he, the, uh, Naoto brought this team to the uh, to the national championships. He did well with it there. And then, you know, he's comfortable with it, right? He has tournament with experience with it. It's almost an identical team. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think it was a really smart call. Um, we also see James Beck, who finished top four at the tournament, use a team that he was using all, all year, which is impressive because um, the format changed three times that year, but he brought the same team for all of it. So he actually didn't even use a Mega Evolution. And so I think these two kind of support the hypothesis, my hypothesis, of course, that um, for 2019 Worlds, the, a really good call was something that you were comfortable with and that had decent answers across the board, but like wasn't going to be perfect, right? So yeah. Um, now let's talk about Umbreon. So um, this is a cool report. I read through it, um, before I read through it again before this. Uh, they go through the team building process. They go through the Pokemon and what, the, what they were used for. I like this little graphic. I think it's really, uh, really, uh, interesting. Um, let's talk about Umbreon. I needed a dark type counter. Pokemon is a counter against Lunala and Yveltal, which are not dealt with as part of the main core. Incineroar was included from the options, first of all. Uh, this was mainly because it was too popular, targeted by everyone, and weak to their pair legendaries, Kyogre and Groudon. Uh, and sometimes even Rayquaza. They ran out of power sometimes. And they sometimes ran a water move. Incineroar didn't fit this team, as it rarely fought positioning battles. Then I searched for another Dark-type Pokemon. First, I picked Mandibaz, which was not weak to Groudon and Kyogre, provides speed control by Tailwind, and has a winning condition with Roost. However, I found it useless when it was ignored. Mandibuzz mainly uses Foul Play to deal damage, but it does not. But it does nothing against uh, pairings such as Feeny plus Incineroar, but a large burden on its partner. Its weakness to Rock-type moves, like Incineroar, is also bad, as it can be knocked out by Stack Attacka, which was often paired with Lunala and Yveltal. I still considered bulky Dark-type Pokemon fine. I looked for Mandibuzz with no such faults, and I found Umbreon. Umbreon's basically good Mandibuzz, apparently. <laughs> Umbreon is a bulky Dark-type Pokemon like Mandibuzz, has a wing condition with Moonlight, and doesn't have weaknesses to Rock-type moves. Additionally, it can make its partner moves, partner's move more powerful with Helping Hand and put pressure on the opponents, so it doesn't matter if it's ignored. It's like attacking through its partner. Although it has a weakness to Fighting-type in common with Incineroar, I don't consider it a problem because there are no Fighting-type Pokemon in the metagame. <laughs> That's very true. And Necrozma, Tapulele, Salamence were extremely strong against Fighting-types if I were to see any. Um, so that's kind of the process. Here's the Umbreon. The team is interesting. It's really cool. It's, uh, Necrozma, actually, which saw some play. I didn't even talk about Unique Lele, but also Necrozma Lele had some usage. Uh, the speed, the spread is interesting as well. It wasn't max speed. Um, HP investment, Minnow's Poison Elite Seed damage, which I guess is 16N, uh, or 8N. Yeah, 8N. Um, I was be max speed not Heligo after Ultra Bursting. Protect is necessary as Necrozma's bulk lowers when it Ultra Bursts. Sorry, I don't know why I'm reading this section. That was I just kind of got lost in... I was going to read the whole report, and then I was like, wait, no, the point of this is the battle, not the report. I definitely recommend you check out the reports. They're very good. I'll link them in the description below. Kangaskhan Mega uh, with Bite and Roar. This is more of a supporting role. Uh, we can see that they use... Um, it breaks Shadow Shield and has a 51% chance to flinch. <laughs> um... Crunch is stronger, but you can't flinch with Crunch, and it can't Oko Lunala anyway. And then Roar is to help against Xerneas and Zern Lunala teams. Um, yeah, Zern Lunala, as I mentioned earlier. And then Mega Salamence, Jolly. Jolly, not naive. Interesting. Um, yeah. You can read through this whole thing. Uh, Umbreon, as you can see here, the moveset is Foul Play, Snarl, Moonlight, Helping Hand. Now, I want to talk about Umbreon going to the finals especially, because 
Umbreon is very strong against Lunala with Foul Play and Snarl, and it's also very good against Groudon, because Gro versus Groudon, you can see it's very physically bulky, max HP, mostly defense, relaxed nature, um, and it has Moonlight, which heals more in Sun. So I know a lot of people, myself included, were kind of feeling like Umbreon was going to be very strong in the final match. So, um, yeah, I don't, like, there's a lot of dynamics going on between the, uh, and the matchup, like, but if you look at this, like, okay, loses to Umbreon, loses to Umbreon, loses to Umbreon, beats Umbreon, mm, loses to Umbreon, and then, like, loses to Umbreon, right? Like, the only Pokemon that can really deal with, uh, with Umbreon is this, uh, Teferi MZ, Moonblast type of Fini. So, other than that, we thought that Umbreon was going to be really, really strong in the finals, um, and maybe this is where kind of the, the comfort factor and the, the experience factor comes into play that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, these are the moves. Uh, it was a really hard Pokemon to remove. Dark typing defensively was phenomenal, as they mentioned. Um, but yeah, with all that being said, I think we can just go ahead and start watching the match. But yeah, going into it, I personally felt like Umbreon was the favorite. It, Umbreon does lose here, which is was surprising to me. But the, I mean, once you see the match, you see that. I mean, it was this is a phenomenal final, in my opinion. Time to decide here. I um, think uh, we'll also have to see how the Groudon speeds match up against each other. And this kind of weird composition where you have both Trick Room and Tailwind, often the speed stats are going to be very specific. Here we go. Both players have made their selections, and they're Sorry. getting ready to jump into the match right now. Give it up for both of these players here. Here we go. This is it. This match is going to determine the world champion here. Uh, the I'd also, I don't, don't take this as, uh, as uh, you know, as fact, but as I recall, one of these uh, players' screen names is Penguin, and one of them is Frog. I think Hirofumi is Frog, and Naoto is Penguin. As I recall, I might be wrong. I might have gotten those flips. So the finals is Penguin versus Frog. Though I like they don't mention that in the report, at least from my quick uh, thing. So yeah. leads with Groudon and Dustmane Necrozma as Naoto leads with the Salamence and Lunal. So uh, Umbreon's on the top, just so we talk about this. So yeah. So Salamence and Lunala here having the option to potentially go for a Trick Room or a Tailwind initially. Uh, big Intimidate off there on the opposing Groudon as well. Definitely makes the firepower significantly reduced. So but, from the leads, oh, uh, we'll wait for uh, There's so much speed control here out on the field immediately. Some of the strongest Pokemon on both players' side. Uh, of course, the Lunala does have the advantage in terms of having a big super effective attack off against the oppos uh, opposing Necrozma. I do have to watch for a potential Moongeist Beam we've seen throughout the course of the- So it feels like the lead goes to Naoto, in my opinion. You've got Groudon and, and Ultra Necrozma, of course, but Necrozma is weak against um, Lunala. It's also, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, Dog for me. I don't remember what it's called. Sun for me? What's the layout of Necrozma called? Dawnwings, Duskmane. It's Duskmane Necrozma, meaning it doesn't have Moongeist Beam. Um, so, yeah. And of course, also Nyoto has the option both of Tailwind and of Trick Room, depending on how things go. I don't... Wait, hang on a second. Let's actually just check so that I don't say something stupid. Does the Necrozma have Trick Room? I didn't actually look. I don't think it does. It does. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so both players have Trick Room options, and there's a Tailwind option. The thing is that Groudon doesn't look super threatening here. Uh, it has Dragon Claw, which actually can hit men, so that's like its best thing, but... Generally, Salamence is thought to match up pretty positively against Groudon, and then you have Lunala threatening the Necrozma and the Groudon, um, who is better physical defense than special defense. So yeah, I think the advantage goes to Naoto here. This one minute's not the Z move there on Lunala. A Salamence here won't be able to do very much damage against the Necrozma, but it also doesn't worry, have to worry too much about attacks from the Groudon. Uh, Dragon Claw is a tech that we've actually seen on a lot of Groudons throughout the course of the tournament, but uh, with the Intimidate, shouldn't be able to do too much damage. I think Naoto here might consider just swapping out immediately. Uh, setting up Tailwind in front of a Necrozma, which can Trick Room, is definitely pretty risky. So Yeah, you uh, also... Out into I like that analysis. Like, t although you have the Tailwind option, if you Tailwind, then the Necrozma will just trick him most likely. Although, like, Moongus Gate Beam is still going to do a lot of damage, but, yeah. Uh, you also want to preserve your Intimidate, because, um, of course, like, Salamence is one of the best answers to Groudon on this team, and it's one of the best ways through Groudon, so, um, yeah, I think, like, preserving Salamence is Intimidate, because once it Mega Evolves, it can't Intimidate anymore, it could be good. You, you have a same switch into Umbreon here. Oh, wait, no, this isn't the Umbreon player, dang it. There's the Groudon in the back. Yeah, and Groudon switches, on, on maybe that's the Umbreon. Side, will switch out, does not want to stay in, take some big damage from that Salamence or that Lunala. Oh, here okay, here it is. Umbreon takes the crowd goes here. wild. <laughs> oh boy. The crowd that's actually... as Salamence reacts to this. Okay, so that's an interesting play. Um, that's not what I expected because, like I said, like you do kind of want your Intimidate later in the game. But yeah, just a big Mega Evolution off the, off the the uh, out of the gates. And now you, you don't have Intimidate for the rest of the game, but you do get Mega Salamence uh, in early, putting on pressure. It's going to go ahead and Mega Evolve here. So going to get that Aerial A ability and be able to dish some big damage out over onto the opposing side of the field. Protect comes out, Rosa defensive play. Protect, Good defensive switch, I like it. Does not want to get hit with a possible Moongeist beam here from this Lunala, as Lunala does Might. land 
and attack into that. Hyper voice? Yeah, hyper voice comes out. Thomas with a hyper voice hit into that Umbreon does no damage. Oh, oh, oh. Umbreon so bulky. <laughs> And Moon Guy's beam to ground as well. Oh yeah, the Moon Guy's beam of yeah. course. Salamence being faster with the Mega Evolution. So Unala coming out, launching Moon Guy's beam, and Umbreon oh, wow. really taking those attacks quite nicely there. No well, okay. So two things to note here. Number one, um, I like the play from Hirofumi a lot. You basically like you bait the Mega Evolution out, right? I like the play from both players' ends. From Naoto's end, he's like, all right, I don't need to intimidate your your ground on later. Um, if I get rid of it now, if I get enough damage on it now that I can just KO it with something later. Hyper Voice plus Moon Guy's Beam isn't going to KO the Groudon, but it should do, like, I would guess, like, 60-70% um, to it. And so, maybe 50-60. Yeah, probably at least 60%, somewhere around there. And so, with that in mind, you know, you can put Groudon in range of something later. Maybe you have Rocky MZ stack attack in the back. Maybe, like, you know, it dep a lot depends on what's in the back, but you do want damage on that Groudon. Um, and, of course, if you get damage on Groudon, the Intimidate later is less useful. And that way, like, your other option is to make play defensive with Mence and... Maybe based on what you have in the back, you don't want to play defensive with men. So I do like the, the decision to Mega Evolve there. I also really like Hirofumi's play, basically. Um, of course, Necrozma now is in a bit of an awkward spot because you can, it can get hit with Moonguy's Beam and Umbreon's already on the field, which is one of the best, which is the best switch to Moonguy's Beam on um, Hirofumi's team, as I recall. Um, so, yeah, of course, like, uh, Necrozma's kind of a sitting duck now, but you also didn't want to get that turn wrong and eat a Moonguy's Beam and just take a ton of damage. So... Uh, and, and the third thing to note, all, of course, is that the Umbreon took basically no damage there. Like, from a Mega Evolution and the Lunala, it takes, like, very minimal damage. Like, I mean, 30-40% is, like, it's a lot in the long run. Like, you definitely need to keep this Umbreon's health in mind. But given the attacks it took, it's not that much. Nyoto. That all. Yeah, Nyoto really hoping to chunk the Groudon immediately, of course, because this is kind of a Groudon mirror match. Being able to deal a lot of damage to your opponent's Groudon immediately, especially when it's intimidated, is obviously quite good. But Hero Fumi not falling into that, switching in the Umbreon, which There's is a lot of offensive pressure here. Quite nicely. Now, Umbreon actually putting on a lot of offensive pressure with potential foul plays on either Pokemon. No speed control coming out, and Salamence now switches. definitely in kind of an awkward spot. Won't be able to do too much damage huh. with the Typer Voice or Double Edge just to switch it out. Oh, and I think Groudon definitely an excellent Pokemon here to put on pressure with Crest's Blades. Groudon, Crest's Blades will be able to do some major damage to that Dust Main Necrozma over on Hero Fumi's side, but does also grant that Umbreon access to uh, the Sunlight, which will allow Moonlight to heal back so much more HP than Nyoto would actually enjoy seeing that Umbreon heal him back. Here we go now, moving into the rest of the turn. Okay, Nala, nice beam. Again, to go so the it. reason why Hero Fumi doesn't, um, doesn't use Ultra Burst there and turn into Ultra Necrozma, just so we're clear, is that um, the ability, it has Prism Armor or whatever it's called, Prism Body, Prism Light Body, its ability reduces super effective damage when it's, but it loses the ability um, once it Ultra Bursts, I almost said Dynamax, because once it Ultra Bursts, it loses that nice ability, so my guess is that Hirofumi is going to be double targeting to the Lunala this turn, um, and for that reason, like, or maybe he just, maybe it goes down to a Moonguy's Beam, I don't know the calcs, because I know that that Ultra Necrozma is more bulky than um, traditional Ultra Necrozma, so, yeah. Beam here. That's the reason why that play. Should be that Dustman and Krozma get some damage out onto that side of the field. Oh, it's very bulky. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought it was going to stop earlier. 25% of the hit points remaining. And here comes a berry <laughs> from this Manala. That is going to be a Cobra Berry. Oh, looks like Trick Room. the amount of damage that this foul play is going to do with that Chow That does nothing ah, okay, for okay. a quadruple uh, super effective hit there. As Dustman and Krozma now gets to move. Okay, I really like that play for a number of reasons. I like the play from both players. Um, If you're at Naoto, you're like, okay, well, they're going to, like, they maybe you predict the Trick Room. Maybe you don't think you can stop it from going up. I don't know if Double Edge would have done enough from there. I have a feeling it may have, but I don't know if Naoto was confident in that. And if you get that wrong, like, you're in trouble. And also, neither of these Pokemon are especially threatening to Groudon. You know that Necrozma is unlikely to Ultra Burst this turn. Uh, even if it does, it doesn't have access to um, the Z-Move right away. So, um, yeah, knowing that it probably isn't going to Ultra Burst right away, or knowing that it probably isn't going to Ultra Burst, and even if it does, it will just go down, you can relatively safely bring in Groudon. You know that Umbreon's almost certainly targeting Lunala, so... Um, yeah, so you burn Groudon, you get some damage in a Krozma, because that's a free Moon Guys Beam into that slot. You're always going to hit something there, because they just protected. Um, and if you're Naoto, you're like, okay, well, Mence, Lunala's in the field. Umbreon's threatening Lunala. Let me get Trick Room up now, because um, I don't know I don't know if these players know who's, who's Groudon is faster, because that is important. But, um, yeah. I think, like, getting Trick Room up, Necrozma, Umbreon, like, putting pressure on Lunala now. Because um, th that foul play is going to do four times as much as it just did. Because it was Shadow Shield for half, and then Culverberry for half. So it's going to do, it's, it'll go Lunala at this range. Quick room here. 
But yeah, Groudon's a nice Griffin spot now. Up, making the dynamic of this matchup really interesting. We'll have to see how all of these Pokemon are trained and which one will go first. I mean, the, the key thing right now is that Groudon is in quite a good spot. We'll be able to do a lot of damage with Yeah, Preston's Blaze. Blaze is really scary Hero here. Fumi might need to, for example, double up into the Groudon if he wants to potentially uh, kind of take out the threat. But I'm not even sure something like a Foul Play and a Photon Geyser will knock it out. Really would come down to how these Pokemon, of course, are trained. Uh, that being said, Necrozma is also often carry Earth Power. So maybe the combination of those two will be enough. Uh, once again, the key question is how slow is this Groudon? Can right. it actually take advantage yeah. of the Trick Room and maybe uh, get an attack off? The speed interactions between Groudon and Necrozma are like really important here. I assume the players know at this point, but it's not... I'm, I, like, I don't the know for Umbron sure. And the Necrozma move, so uh, be really critical to see how these Pokemon are trained and will definitely dictate the rest of this matchup in terms of whether either trainer kind of wants to set up Trick Room. Here we go now, moving into the next Manal turn. switches. Manal does not want to take another foul play from that Umbreon. Holy Feeny, right? Out, trying to pivot yeah. and deal with this Trick Room as Top of Feeny takes the field. And as you mentioned, Aaron, that Top of Feeny is going to be big to try to deal with this Umbreon on Hero Fumi's side. All right, who moves first here? It looks like it will be the Umbreon. Snarl. Snarl. Okay. Going to drop the special attack stat of the ground with a critical hit being dealt over there on the uh, on Nyota's side of the field. Uh, that's going to be important to that top of Fini. Won't be dealing as much damage, but that Groudon we've seen before. And here it is, a huge fire punch into that Dustman and Crows. Like this turn doesn't look exciting, but I really like it for a number of reasons. I'm going to explain a little bit. Um, number one, okay. I don't think that anything in the back... We're going to have to see if if um, Hirofumi has something in the back that can switch into Presbyth Blades, but my gut is that, it, that he doesn't. So he says, all right, I could protect Necrozma, but, you know, like... If you protect Necrozma, then Umbreon has to potentially take two Presbyth Blades, so it might actually be better just, just to sack it at this point and then get into your own Groudon to start pressuring in, in return. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is that um, the Umbreon goes for Snarl. I'm a little surprised to see Snarl here. Um, I don't know if the Groudon has Eruption. Does the Groudon have Eruption? It doesn't have Eruption. Okay, then I'm not entirely sure about... about um, Snarl there. Uh, maybe a switch was predicted. Maybe the Feeny was... maybe You know, maybe the Feeny was predicted and you figure, well, I don't really have anything better to do except go for Foul Play onto the Groudon, so maybe Snarl just to reduce the damage of that in the future. Maybe it was a read. Um, or maybe they thought Snarl would KO. I don't personally think it would, but maybe. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not totally sure. And on Naoto's side, he says, all right, Precipice Blade is only 85% accurate. If I miss Precipice Blades, I could be in a real world of trouble. Why, why risk it in the World's Finals? Why risk it on a Precipice Blade? So, um... Instead, what he goes for is Fire Punch. And he says, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to miss Fire Punch. And and you're not going to switch your Groudon into my Fire Punch because the obvious move is Precipice Blades because it's extra credit. You get free, you get the knockout on Necrozma anyway and you get damage on Umbreon. But I really like that Naoto chooses to play it safe there. Gets the KO and gets Feeny into pressure you know, the Umbreon. That's the physical Groudon, so that smell's not going to matter at all. Yeah, so opting for the Fire Punch instead of the more risky Preston's Blade just to get some guaranteed damage. Groudon, I think. The big knockout there onto yeah. the Necrozma. Tapu Fini actually in a decent position right now. The Snarl is, however, a big deal. Means that uh, Moonblast probably won't this be able to knock out. This game is a masterclass in offensive pressure. Like, this is the way that Naoto's maneuvering here is so impressive, and it's so interesting to me. Um, sorry, I should talk about the dogs. I have to walk the dogs. Um, it's so interesting to me because this isn't how my brain works at all. Like, this kind of offensive pressure. Like, every single turn, Naoto has had Hirofumi on the back foot. Every single turn, he's got to react to something. Because it, whether it's Lunala pressuring Lute Necrozma, Ment pressuring Groudon, uh, Feeny pressuring Umbreon, Groudon pressuring Umbreon, Groudon pressuring Necrozma. Like, every turn... Um, um, Every single turn, there's something that uh, that Hirofumi's threatened by. And it's because of this really good offensive pressure and switching. Um, getting Mens into Groudon as Trick Room goes up, and then getting Lunala into Fini um, as Necrozma goes down is just phenomenal. Because also, like, you still have the Mens in the back. You still have Tapuni and Tapu Fini, which threatens the Umbreon. And, um, you know, like, your Groudon's still relatively healthy. And, and you know, Groudon does survive Precipice Blades. And you're also threatening Nature's Madness. Something like Protect Nature's Madness um, is really strong. Um... 
if you know, and then and then the opposing Groudon's in, in Precipice Blaze range, and there shouldn't really be anything that the opposing Groudon can do to get the Feeny into Precipice Blaze range. Plus, you have the threat of that full HP Ment switching in. So, really good offensive pressure. Got the Umbreon on the opposing <laughs> side. We have B and B as the move on the top of Feeny, though. So perhaps the Fairy MZ will be able to still pick up the KO. That being said, I expect Umbreon to be able to outspeed the top of Feeny here under Trick Room. So maybe Sorry, after another battle, uh, the Umbreon actually could even take. And of course, Umbreon is threatened by Tectony and Z. Or, yeah, or from the right Fairy and Z. Just hits everything for so hard on both sides. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of damage that, that Umbreon has. The other interesting thing here is that, like, I, I don't know if these players knew whose Groudon was faster, but, like, I don't know because both players have Trick Room, right? And, they, and I mean, now it's Tailwind. I don't relieve Hirofumi as Tailwind. What's the Mega Evolution on Hirofumi's side? Sorry. I know you probably just want to watch the match, but I want to know what, what's going on. Fully. Lele, Kang. Oh, oh, here, Fumi is Kangaskhan. Right, right. I thought, for some reason, I'm in my head now to have Kangaskhan. Okay, yeah. So, uh, my instinct would say that Hiro Fumi has an incentive to go min speed Groudon, whereas Naoto doesn't. But, uh, you know, you can't be sure because there's other factors at play, like outspeeding other Groudon in general. Oh, like, taken, outspeeding Trick Room. does drop that special attack stat, but even then, a Twinkle Tackle Switch. is going to be dealing a lot of damage Mence. as Naoto's Groudon switches out. Yes, they're not wanting Salmon to take this field here. Yeah, not wanting to take the Precipice Blades there, perhaps knowing that his ground is faster. And just the Moonlight. Though. Moonlight, oh, Moonlight, I'm Oh, sorry. no, the Moonlight, yeah. <laughs> we both fell for it. <laughs> Wrong Moon move from my uh, perspective there, as Umbreon heals back to full health as... Nature's yeah, Madness. Nature's Madness from that top really good play. into Hiro Fumi's ground on dealing 50% damage right there. And, wow, here's a Precipice Blades. Blades from that Primal ground on connects with that top Fini. Does good damage right there. Oh, it did a lot. Bringing it down to... Okay, so I really like that play from... I understand why... I, I like the play from both players. Hirofumi says, all right, I snarled you last turn, so I'm confident I can take a Moonblast. Um, your Fini is your best answer to my Umbreon, so I'm, you know, I'm relatively confident you might go for it. Why don't I Moonlight up? I still have my Barry intact. Get back to full HP, and that way I'll have to still have, like, a comfortable amount of HP after um, after the turn. Also, your Groudon very well may play defensively, so I don't really... Like, I don't want to Moonblast and then... Or I don't want to foul play into Groudon, have it protect, and then lose my Umbreon, right? Um, Naoto, on the other hand, says, all right... Um, I, if I hit your ground on with Nature's Madness, then, uh, it'll be in range of, you know, Lunala plus Hyper Voice, maybe just Raw Lunala, and it will be in range of my Precipice Blades later. So he's setting up for the late game here. It brings Mence in because, uh, opposing Groudon has Dragon Claw, I believe. Um, but other than that, like, it's not the, it's not in the most threatening spot right now, and also, it's just, like, another turn. Um, I really like what Naoto is doing, which is that he's switching rather than protecting a lot of the time, because once you, something that I never really considered until this moment is that, once you protect, you leave yourself open for a prediction next turn, right? Like we mentioned earlier, when Necrozma protected, there was a safe Moonguys beam into that slot. By kind of being preemptive and switching here, you maintain a lot of momentum and, and you don't allow your opponent... Like, because now he can protect this turn rather than the turn before. So delaying protects, I think, is really, really good. A little under 50%. Yeah, really good damage there, actually. Another Preston's Blades will get the knockout there, and that is absolutely crucial. Important to note, though, that the top of Feeny, of course, outspeeding the Groudon here yeah. under Trick Room. Feeny's slower so, than Groudon. Able to get a big attack off of here, but you can see how the Umbreon has really poisoned itself for success, especially after getting that initial Snarl off. From Hirofumi's Feeny... side, the other thing to note is that uh, Umbreon is... Um, uh, Umbreon is, is at full HP, and Feeny is the quickest way to remove it, and Umbreon can absolutely stall, a lot, like, certain Pokemon. Like, basically, like, Feeny's nearly gone, and Lunala can never touch Umbreon, so it's kind of up to Mence and Groudon at this point to win the game. He goes down, I think it's going to be and we really, really, really difficult from, to deal uh, with the Umbreon, so and full because HP. the Snarl went off against Papu Feeny, it's really not hitting for very much damage right now. Uh, with Trick Room being up, Salamence also kind of in an awkward spot. Sure, he can go for a Hyper Voice, but switch? really uh, nothing to deal with no, this Umbreon right okay. now, and, uh, yeah, Umbreon in I think that's a our first protect from Naoto. Ooh! Hirofumi here reacting, and looks like a oh, oh. play into that Salamence slot. Good damage dealt over to that. Oh, Dragon Claw? Oh, it's the Claw! Dragon Claw! Oh, oh, oh. oh. Salamence hangs on! That's a huge survive. So Salamence hangs on with just two hit points here, and uses Hyper Voice connected with that Groudon and that Umbreon. <laughs> Some damage over there, a critical I hit, a crit. I believe, onto that Umbreon slot. <laughs> I mean, that's still an excellent read there. Doesn't get the knockout onto Salamence. That's a huge but, survival. I, mean, I think if Mence goes down there, you're in a really, really good spot because now you can press his blades freely and there's nothing really that you can do about it, uh, that Naoto can do about it. However, uh, in that position, yeah, like really, really, really good read. Um, I mean, Feeny wasn't going to do that much anyway, right? It was going to Z Moonblast. 
your Umbreon, I guess. Um, but even still, like I, I think that that was a really smart call. Talents with a hyper voice that it really just doesn't do. Very and now, now, just far, like again. this is the first time it feels like he's been on the back foot. Up, the crowd on um, Hero Fumi's end has so much control right now. You can just click press this place, get some guaranteed damage off. Uh, the Umbreon can do so many different attacks right now. It can choose to heal. Like Tabu Finish gives him such an awkward spot. You want to switch it off, of course, because you want to reset that special attack drop and hope to eventually get a big Farium Z into the Umbreon slot later. But if you switch out, whatever comes in is going to take a big press this blades. Obviously. I almost feel like Naruto might just double attack here. So Though I'm sure he might protect. But I mean, the Salmas really just isn't able to do very much right now. Oh, if he switches, okay. Pretty much have to switch out there. Ah, uh, is not going to appreciate taking a lot of damage. Yeah, here. good, yeah, good call, good switch. The only Pokemon that can come in and take that switch. Naruto switches. Oh, well, that was what I expected. Out as well. Hero Fumi huh. switches in the top oh, lane, lane, changing the terrain uh, as well as boosting psychic type moves. So that's one of the things about top of lane. Uh, great move right here from Hero Fumi to switch in that top of lane. A lot of these top of lane tend to carry choice scarf, and with Trick Room expiring at the end of this turn, top of lane will be able to Sarah have a speed advantage here. <laughs> and here is a snarl from that Umbreon. Gets in that <laughs> Salmon's protect. Drops uh, Lunala's it's not special that attack, which Lunala enjoys using here, and. That was really good positioning for both players. Um, now to expect Umbreon to go for an attack into Grout into the Salamence, um, probably to knock it out, or maybe he expects, he expects a Snarl. I don't know. Um, but he also knows that he needs to stay Feeny in order to beat the um, to beat the Umbreon, and also apparently to overrate the Psychic terrain from Lele. Um, Hirofumi says Trick Room is ending, and I, I know you're going to protect your Ments. Why don't I bring in my only Pokemon that's faster than the Ments that I have left, my Lele? So I really, really like that play from both players. I feel like it goes more to Hirofumi, but. Um, now just still hanging in there, and now, you know, Lele can only knock out one of these Pokemon, so you have the ability to make a trade, and, um, depending on, actually, I mean, if you could find, if, if Mungus, if Mindful Mungus Beep knocks out the Lele, then you're actually not in a bad spot here, because basically what you can do is, you can basically, like, Groudon, ver Groudon versus, assuming Naoto's Groudon is faster, then Groudon and Feeny versus Groudon and Umbreon, the Feeny player should win, so, oh boy, I like the position uh, Hero Fumi really managing this game super super nicely. Hit I think very difficult to kind of maneuver with a. But this is very close. Uh, like this is super close this point. And this Umbreon really doesn't care whether it's going first or last because it's just not taking any damage right now from the uh, Salamence. Lele probably can't bring himself. Maybe a double edge would I mean, be able to do enough, but I really don't think so. Based on how this Umbreon looks like it's trained and it just really really great use. This turn is very play, awkward. And, I will say. Uh, the Moonlight just really. Great adjustments here, and so Tapu Lele obviously also exerting on an immense amount of offensive pressure. Uh, Umbreon has also been able to force Tapu Fini out on the field, so it's just really not threatened immensely right now, and can really just choose to do whatever it wants. Yeah, and Lunala, of course, oh, that's not what I expected. does not want to take a, another attack from that Umbreon uh, foul play or even a snarl. And Psychic, that's also not what I expected. From that Tapu Lele, huh. connects with that Salmon to get the KO all two hit points right there, as Umbreon uses the turn to attack into that Lunala. Yeah, so okay. Tapu Lele revealing that it is quite speedy, confirming that probably is that Choice Scarf item. Uh, Choice Scarf makes a lot of sense, especially mm. given the Necrozma team. Uh, it, you know, I like. I I sorry. I actually like that play was weird, but it's actually if it's a very good play if you think Lunala isn't gonna KO Lele, which it probably isn't in one shot. So you basically you, you do want to play to that Umbreon plus Groudon versus uh, Groudon Fini endgame, I think. However. Bringing in Groudon now allows you to go for Moon, uh, Moon Guys Beam and Precipice Blades both into the Lele. And as long as your Groudon is faster than their Groudon and you hit that Precipice Blades, that should be a no, pretty easy win. The Ultra come out this game, but, of but those are both assumptions, right? So, powerful, yeah. especially with but it should be Groudon coming in here. I don't think Feeny uh, wants to come Lele, very common Unless, No, I think Groudon has to come uh, in here. Fumi has managed this so well. I mean, setting up Trick Room, getting Umbreon in, in the perfect position, getting these snarls and foul plays off. And there is just nothing yeah. to Groudon's deal with healthy. the Umbreon. Yeah, Groudon comes out, but once again, Lunala can't hit the Umbreon, and Groudon maybe can go for a press this plays or a fire punch i don't even think that's enough to get the knockout and of course umbreon can just consistently heal so it's number of really the key pokemon in this matchup and the main thing for now i like this match because it feels very much kind of like defensive versus offensive oriented play sure like necrozma and lele are typically thought of as offensive pokemon but the way that um hirofumi's managed his positioning is, is really impressive he's got trigger up at the right time and then he got lele in at the right time i, I really like it he wasn't able to get the top of in on a position where he can just threaten with this very mv immediately so uh you know, can't even bring out the Tapu Fini right now because it might just faint to a Psychic from the Tapu Lele. Yeah, and this uh, Tapu Lele has the option to go for a powerful Psychic into that ground on spot. Yeah. Deal some massive damage as well in this Psychic train. So, Hero Fumi is playing the board position game so well right now. Being able I to favor kind of Naoto's position here, personally. Being able to take advantage of Trick Room and also have his fast Pokemon take advantage of when that Trick Room expires. Yeah, so let's see if there's a Protect coming out from Switch. the Switch, I honestly right agree with it. Bypass the psychic like course. I said, there's nothing Hirofumi can do to stop the endgame there of, um, of, 
um, Groudon Feeny versus Groudon Umbreon. Yeah, I'm assuming that. Um, Primal Groudon faster. takes the field instead. So instead you sack it. Side, as oh, a switch. Out, uh, resetting the terrain for Wait, Naruto what? Team. So the Misty Terrain is going to take effect here. Uh, oh, that's not what I expected. Did I miss allowing something? Allowing Groudon on Naruto's side to be able to survive a psychic from that top of Lele, but here he comes out. No fire punch. Oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, oh it doesn't care. not even enough to get the KO. Big survival right there. And oh, and a to Groudon. Final play from the Umbreon does so much damage. Oh my god, that's a lot. Yeah, but the upside here is that Naoto actually has. Okay, so actually, Gra the uh, Hirofumi's Groudon surviving is really, really good for Naoto. Like, if Groudon goes down there, it's actually really awkward because Lele comes in in Psychic Terrain and, like, Psychic Foul Play, Psychic Foul Play. So that's a really fortunate survival from the f from the Fire Punch um, there. I think that, yeah, I think that if. I also didn't know Foul Play 2K had Groudon from that range. That's insane. Or it looks like it probably key 2K is. Um, actually, no, it doesn't 2K. Um, but it's going to be close. Yeah, I, maybe I missed something because I definitely thought that the Moon Guys being plus P Blades uh, was a really safe play there. Um, but again, it, maybe the Groudon speeds are different than I realized. We're going to find out probably right here. Um, other than that, I don't really understand the switches. I understand the switch from Hirofumi, but I, I don't really understand why Feeny went in there. You do, I understand wanting to save Lunala, but for what is kind of my question. Like, why do you want to save your Lunala here? But Hirofumi calls it correctly and predicts the switch, it looks like, or at least predicts Lunala doesn't want a Moongeist beam right away. So, um, yeah, Finally, definitely good play from both players. I'm just, I, 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 I exactly the position that he wants now can threaten with a potential Z move into that Umbreon spot. But yeah. I this is good, like, that survival is huge for, for Naoto, not KOing here. This is an example of a time where it's better not to get a KO. Um, and yeah, Hirofumi definitely suffers a lot, because if Lele is in Psychic Terrain at full HP here, I don't really know how you win, because you can just Psychic, like, you just have to make Psychic calls correctly, but, like, I feel like Psychic into, um, well, the two here as well. That could be absolutely critical. Yeah, it's not over over. You, you so have to make some calls correctly, but right now, yeah, uh, it's looking really good. If you get that land, might just be able to get the knockout on both. Of course, uh, I mean, there's so many dynamics going on here, but Umbreon now finally in a position where it actually is threatened. Of course, won't be able to do very much damage against the opposing Tapu Fini as well. So we'll have to see which Groudon is faster here. This is going to come down to this. Yeah, speed, this speed is, is so important right now. Momentum depending on whose ground is able to move first and. <laughs> Who's going to be able to knock out each other's Groudons first? And here we go, coming in this turn. Check, Groudon yeah. on, on Hero Food is back to protect itself. Doesn't want to play a possible speed game here. And Groudon hits into Hero Fumi's. No, oh, yeah. Oh, Groudon actually fire hits into the Groudon, uh, the Groudon yeah. on Hero Fumi's. And here's a twinkle tackle from that top of Fini. Is he yeah, so looking like uh, trying to just go for the safe target, not opting to risk a potential Preston Blaze here. Barium Z does come out. That is the best move to deal with the Umbreon. This so, is going to be so close. Uh, yeah, no switch out from the Umbreon there into that top of Lele means that it probably will go down here. Let's see if it will do enough damage. I expect it to. No snarls onto Nile. To side of the field, the twinkle tackle connects yeah. to that Umbreon, gets the KO, so that <laughs> Hirofumi comes so close here. Basically, what happens in the end game is Lele comes in, and now you can threaten KOs on both Pokemon with Psychic plus it's like Psychic into Groudon and then Presbus plays into the Fini for the KO. But then you can't beat Lunala, unfortunately, for Hirofumi, so it's very, very close. Again, but I, I agree with the end game nonetheless. Going for I think a it was fire a good punch here, just trying to target down in that ground, knowing that that twinkle tackle is about to KO that Umbreon, anyways. Let's see though, that is the Choice Scarf Tapu Lele now returning to the field and having Psychic Terrain pressure, so able to uh, do so much damage. Uh, we'll see what attack it chooses. Yeah, this one's really down to the wire. Psychic probably the best one, but of course Lunala in the back does resist it. And once again, who is faster here between the Groudons? That is going to be a big, big question. But Lunala still in the back with a uh, fair amount of health if you lock yourself So I actually... Psychic. Personally, I think the win con is double protect here because if you just psychic into Groudon and fire punch into Feeny or press those blades, then you win. Like, you knock out the two in the field, but then you always lose to Lunala. So, I actually think the play is double protect, lock into Moonblast, and try and two hit KO the Groudon with Moonblast. Uh, you know, psychic probably I wonder if they'll go for it. Lunala in the back, Lunala can retaliate back with something like a Moongeist beam. So, I mean, maybe you can hold psychic, but I don't think what so. It looked like a pretty difficult position by bringing out the top of Feeny in the perfect position and whittling away in terms of damage. Boy, this is a tough spot. I mean, this Groudon is so threatened by this top of Lele on the other side of the field. So of course, Groudon could come down to the well. Groudon. So, so actually, might have to try to maybe that's better. Think about yeah, maybe actually it doesn't matter. To maybe preserve this Groudon for later on. He's thinking so hard right now as that timer ticks and ticks away. This is going to be such a big turn here. Yeah, yeah. okay, Groudon it didn't matter. Does not want to take that psychic from the top of Lele at all as top of Lele 
Uses Second. a move into that Groudon for Tice, and here comes oh. Hero Please Groudon. Looks like the Groudon's faster. Place. Yeah, it's going for Preston's Blaze, and it connects with the top of Fini. That's absolutely huge. Yeah, so that connects with that top of Fini and gets the KO from that range. So now it's down to both these players' last Pokemon in this exciting game one already, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, absolutely <laughs> critical there, of course, with the Groudon and Hero Fumi's end is actually. Okay, great. actually, I like. I like the play from here, Fumi. Like, it it feels kind of like a mind game, right? Like, if you protect Groudon, like if 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 you protect Groudon, uh, if sorry, if Hero Fumi protects Groudon, Lunala comes in. Let's say Lunala attacks into Groudon, you call the protect correctly. Um, then basically what happens is, actually, yeah, this isn't over. Yeah, like basically what happens is like you waste the turn, you lose your Groudon. Um, and like then maybe Lele two hit KOs Lunala. However, the other option is that, um, the other option is that you know. If you attack Temple Lele to avoid that, and Groudon just and you know Lele psychics into your Groudon and Groudon fire punches into your Lunala, then you'll lose. So it feels actually like a 50-50. Uh, Assuming Lele to hit KOs the um, very Lunala. To know based off the team compositions here, so that's I don't a very, know. very big piece of information. The Lunala. other thing is that that was the first turn of psychic terrain, so this is the second, and then protect would be the third, and then attack would be the fourth. I don't know. It's, it's close. This is a close one. Beam, of course, it can be definitely go either way. Just get the knockout onto Groudon, and depending on how the top of Lele is trained, might just also be able to get the one hit KO there. Uh, Groudon having Groudon having protected last turn means that uh, top of Lele can just launch an attack freely into that slot, uh, depending on what it locked itself into. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if it is psychic. I mean, Lunala here feels like it's gonna force the target down the Groudon. You don't want to eat a Preston's Blades, but Hirofumi, of course, could predict that, protect the Groudon, and then you force a 2v1 position in which you win. So let's see if Groudon gets the attack! Oh. He gets the double protect! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh! And uh, Tapu Lele forces Psychic in that Groudon's protect. Lunala targeting, though! Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here. What is this Moon Geist Beam going to target down? Some damage okay, okay, it didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. The double protect is optimal because otherwise you're just fainting. Um, but yeah, that was the right play. That was 100% so the right play. play. It didn't right matter. There, the double yeah. protect doesn't so, matter. play right there. Just get the KO on that ground on immediately. Yeah, I mean that's what we were talking about. That right here for me could have potentially baited out that Moon Guy's team by going in for protect that turn. Then you force the QB one position. Maybe two psychics under psychic trains enough to take it. But a big, big double protect there. I'm not actually sure it ended up mattering there because it, Moon Guy's team might just be able and to knock down okay. Lunala. Let's see how much psychic would have done to Lunala. Oh. Right there, but Lunala hangs on, so another psychic is what is needed. To this is winnable, KO. actually. This is After really. This was down to a 50-50. Moon Guy's team now crashes into that top um, of Lele, gonna deal some big, super effective damage here. One shots. And yeah. top of Lele just outright gets one hit KO now. So. Takes so one. it was down to a 50 50 but it wasn't actually 50 50 because uh he got the he got the double protect so it didn't matter but yeah um if the double protect fails there then it's a 50 50 but yeah uh now to improve his odds slightly obviously he's a world champion so um makes the correct call i'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording here which is a recording and not a live video because i have to walk my dog so um i'm gonna cut to the second battle right now Okay, I'm back, and this time I'm not streaming, and I'm simply recording. Um, not that I was doing that before. I'm also slightly sweatier, so no, no judgment. It's hot outside. I will shower after this. Anyway, okay, so game one. Finished. Thrilling set. Wow, that was intense. That was such a good game. So, that one really could have gone either way. That one, there was a couple things that didn't go in um, Hirofumi's way, but that was really down to the wire. Like, I actually forgot how close that was, and even at the end, um, it had a chance to go either way, so... That was a lot closer than I recall. It looked like Hirofumi had kind of, uh, you know, board control right from the beginning, being able to set up that trick room. Umbria, for example, had Groudon protected okay. there, had the double not gone off, then uh, the game would be completely different. Really coming down to that pivotal turn, uh, seeing, you know, what does a Groudon do on both players' end? And wow, wow, that was so, so close. That was also such masterful board position playing by both of those players. I Absolutely. Mean, Naoto seemed like his back was against the wall, but he was able, as you mentioned, to be able to get that top of Fini out onto the field at the right time with the ability to just go for a twinkle tackle, not risking being snarled. As I recall, Kangaskhan is the lead in game two. Hirofumi played exceptionally well as well, if you think about it. I mean, that trick room, even though a lot of his Pokemon are actually fast. But uh, I haven't watched you know, this since I watched it live, so. Maintain a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage be, with know. that Umbreon underspeeding almost everything over on Naoto. The reason I say that Kangaskhan is the lead is because I have I remember having specific anxiety about whether or not Kangaskhan bite would flinch. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I that's from like here. I feel the Umbreon, or not. the Groudon, and the uh, Necrozma are still definitely the right Pokemon to bring in here. So 
Uh, question is, do you bring in the Choice Scarf Chapu Lele again? That doesn't fit very well into the Trick Room strategy if you're opting to go for that. And of course, Lunala can take Psychics pretty well. So if you do bring the Trick Room strategy again, maybe you prioritize trying to knock out the Lunala earlier on. So then you're free to kind of just click Psychic on everything. I just saw Umbreon on the table. That's cute. Viable. I mean, Kangas Gun definitely could make a lot of sense here into the matchup as well. So let's see. Nyoto is one game away from wrong. winning the World Championship, but Umbreon makes in its appearance once again. This time as a lead. Hero Fumi leads up. Ooh. Oh. And over on the other side of the field, Naoto leads with Tapu Fini and the Lunala. That's a really smart lead. I like the adjustments from both players, but it definitely favors Matt Naoto here. Once again, from the start, exerting offensive pressure. Um, Naoto's threatening KOs on probably both Pokemon, depending on how Fini interacts with Lunala here. However, um, yeah. Like, I mean, if Fini's slow... Actually, no, Fini's slower than Lunala. Never mind, never mind. He's not threatening... He probably isn't threatening a KO on Ultra Necrozma, unless Moon Guys being plus Scald takes the KO. But yeah, putting on a lot of offensive pressure here. Um, if you're here with Fumi, you think, all right, well, I switched into my Umbreon turn one. I think that he's going to lead Lunala again. If he leads Lunala immense, my Umbreon's really strong. Why don't I get the pressure on Lunala from the get-go? And now to probably uh, says, all right, um, maybe I think you're going to lead Umbreon. I don't know exactly what was going through his head, but yeah, like maybe he predicts an Umbreon lead, or maybe he thinks... Um, that leading Feeny is beneficial anyway. And so he says, all right, well, like, Lunala is really good against the, the majority of your team. The one Pokemon it's not really great against is your Umbreon. You know, why don't I just, you know, make this easy and, and you know, cover everything with with this combination of Pokemon right at the gate. So um, I would say advantage Naoto, but not, not set in stone by any means. Yeah, I mean, I think having the Tapu Fini out against Umbreon while Turkrim's not up and with no Snarl out is such great board positioning here from Nyoto. Being able to threaten with that Farium Z immediately into the Umbreon. Um, Umbreon here pretty much forced to switch out if it does not want to get knocked out. Of course, you could switch out into something both like Pokemon are in front of KO, That's probably actually. the best possible option to take the Farium Z. Nyoto might have and he locks in that quickly, that's interesting. We saw Moon Guy's team, of course, does a lot of damage to the opposing Necrozma. Necrozma here won't be able to retaliate with too much damage on either of these Pokemon. Might want to try to set up a Trick Room, especially if you're trying to pivot in the ground on here. So Umbreon in a very, very awkward spot. Does not want to just faint to the Z-move immediately, and I think it's pretty much forced to switch out. Yep, and again, that ground on is probably the best switch. Be able to take a resisted Fairy-type attack here. The issue about uh, switching into V is Nature's Madness, again, but forced yeah. to switch out. Still doesn't want to risk getting one hit KO'd immediately, and there it is, the Groudon, as you mentioned, Aaron. Great call there, buddy. Groudon coming in, I think really pretty much the only option there. He's like, it switches in obviously quite nicely into any fairy type attack. So the key question here is, did Nyoto maybe predict this, predict this and not waste the Z-move? I think Hirofumi might have been going with this lead intentionally to try to bait out the Z-move, because if you can get it out immediately, that's such a big threat out of the way. Yeah, and progressing with the rest of this Oh! Uh, Dustman Necrozma. Photon guys are into that Lunala, breaking that Shadow Shield right there. Uh, not very effective damage at all, but the important part is it does get some chip damage out on that field as Lunala uses Moon Geist Beam here. We haven't played with Lunala, so maybe I should explain this. Lunala's ability gives it its multi scales. The same as Dragon Knight's ability, same as um, Lugia's hidden ability. When it's at full HP, the first, like, whenever it's at full HP, attacks do one half damage. So. Even though Photon Geyser doesn't actually look like it does a lot, it's still important damage to break the shield here. for the rest Targeting of the game. Down that dust and again, that does a lot of damage right That's there. Not damage. to quite get the one-hit KO, but still getting as much damage out. Oh! oh and here comes the Nature's Madness! A what a great play. play there. Doesn't get baited, doesn't use play. the Z-move. Of course, Umbreon there is going to switch off. He does like 130 damage, 130% to, um, to the to the restricted duo in combination. 50% to Groudon, like 80% to uh, Necrozma. Phenomenal play. And like, I mean, sure, Umbreon could have stayed in there. Um, but really, like, you were never going to get KO'd with Lunala, probably. Uh, Necrozma has to not, uh, fa uh, uh, is burst, Ultra Burst, in order to, um, survive. So it's not doing that much damage to your Pokemon. They can't Z-move right away. Um, overall, a really, really good play. And you figure, alright, maybe Umbreon stays in, but it still takes half health, even if it does stay in, and even if it does attack. Um, and then, you know, maybe the regular Moonblast will KO it. And I'm not even positive that, um... That Z, like Z Moonblast would have KO'd from full. It probably would have, to be honest, because we saw that Umbreon was physically bulky. But you don't need to risk it, right? Um, you certainly don't want to blow your Z move too early in this game, like because you kind of want it to KO Umbreon as a last resort. So Nature's Madness is a phenomenal play. I don't dislike Hirofumi's play either, because um, it also would have been relatively easy, I think, for Naoto to actually like go for Moon Guys Beam and Z Moonblast into Umbreon. I think that also would have been a good play because Umbreon can't protect itself, so you're getting like minimum sixty percent on something, right? I don't think. There's anything that can switch into that on uh, on, on Hirofumi's team. So I don't dislike the the attacking and breaking the shield because you really, kind of what we talked about last game, you really don't want to get caught without a protect on this next turn. Although, yeah, like, it could have been okay, but 
yeah, I really like this player. A lot like of this. times, and even if it doesn't, you still get 50% of damage off. But great decision on Iota's end not to go for the Z move. I think a lot of players might opt in tunnel vision in that position and just try to get that knockout immediately. Goes for a very, very safe Nature's Madness there. And getting that much damage off against Crowd on his green. Iota definitely winning the damage oh, straight off the first move. Once again, recognizes need to conserve top of need to deal with the Umbreon in the back. Yeah. Salman, such a great switch in here to reduce the firepower from Groudon, and yeah, the Shadow Shield was broken on Lunala's end, but it, what's Hirofumi able to do in terms of damage right now, especially given like Groudon is intimidated? Ultra yeah, not that many uh, offensive options here for Hirofumi, as another yeah. Photon Geyser is used, oh no, sorry, an Ultra Burst here, as Ultra Necrozma takes the field, you're gonna get a lot of great stat boost Go there, protect. and be able to dish yeah. a lot of damage, but instead, Hirofumi using this turn to just protect itself, uh, Fire protection both. Doesn't want to get hit. Oh, good read. Moon Geist Beam really good read. As the Lunala used that Moon Geist Beam into that slot. And here's a Fire Punch. Oh, I thought it was Dragon Claw and Groudon. I was Lunala like, no way. Okay. Stuff. Really good play for Hero Fumi there. Gets pretty much as much as he can outside of Dragon Clawing. Maybe like the... The... Um, the Dement Switch in. But the thing is that... So normally Ultra Necrozma would outspeed Mega Salamence, as I recall. I believe Mega Mence is... I believe Ultra Necrozma is like base 129 or something. However, as we, as you might recall, this is a modest Ultra Necrozma um, that is not max speed. It's EV just outspeed Nihil Ego. And we also saw that Naoto, this is why I showed you the teams in advance, Naoto has max speed Salamence. So um, basically, normally Ultra Necrozma could survive this, but in this position, Hyper Voice, assuming it KOs Necrozma, or maybe Double Edge because you know it's jolly, not naive. But yeah, like basically, Mens can actually threaten the Oko on uh, Lunala, uh, Necrozma, sorry before it is able to attack, which would not be the case if it was max speed uh, Necrozma. So that's one of those, like, better in Trick Room, worse out of Trick Room. And Mence is one of the big dividers there, so. Sunlight, dishing out some good, decent damage. Yeah, decent damage, but really nice to bring in the Salamence there for Intimidate. Salamence I also really like, like this Mence switch because it does two things. Number one, you weaken the Groudon. Good, like, good across the board. You want that Groudon weaker. Um, you're, and you know that Hirofumi would have to be out of his mind to Dragon Claw Fini. Like, that switch wasn't... 100%. Like, you could have just Z ferried into the Necrozma and Moongai's beam the Groudon. I think that would have been a fine play as well. So, um, you probably weren't going to get Dragon Claw there. And so, like, it's not like Groudon. If it's not using Dragon Claw, it's not damaging Ments that much. This protects Lunal a little bit. You're still covering the Necrozma in case it chooses to, um, attack. And yeah, like, you're in good kind shape. Kind of an now, excellent Pokemon to have on right now, putting on a lot of pressure. With I just don't know if Hyper Voice goes Necrozma. Is it just kind of bulky? See how the speed or it's trained of the bulky. And the Ultra Necrozma here match up. Of course, Ultra Necrozma can get a very, very powerful. Powerful Z move off here. Might just be able to launch that into the opposing Salamence slot. Uh, but depending on how Salamence is trained, perhaps they can actually survive it. Obviously, what can go for something like a Hyper Voice or a Double Edge just to get a switch, knockout. Yeah, and here for me, actually going for the switch out here. Oh, but Nyoto reacting positively. Did he maybe predict this? Here is that Umbreon and. <sighs> Salamence now Mega Evolves, getting that air related ability as well as boosting its speed, one of the fastest Pokemon in the format, as well as being one of the hardest hitters. I assume Groudon has here. Well. Oh, no! Oh, the Tailwind! Oh. Salamence using Tailwind, gonna double the speed of the Pokemon on Naoto side of the field as Lunala uses Moon Geist hmm. Beam here. Can get some great damage dealt onto the Groudon on Hero Fumi side, hitting first. Wow! Oh, that was a Groudon hard read. Hangs on on Hero Fumi side though, and here's another fire punch. But again, those intimidates are so. So important. now taking stock, like okay, now took his tailwind up. Now just Lunala has like 50 HP left, right? But Hero Fumi Groudon and Hero Fumi Necrozma, which is the trick room setter on the team, um, both have very low HP, like extremely low HP, and so immense hyper voice is just putting on a lot of pressure right now. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it feels like all the momentum is on Naoto's side because both of Hero Fumi's restricted Pokemon are in range of Salamence, Hyper Voice, and Tailwind's up. So they're in range of everything, basically. Um, we assume that Naoto brings the last... Brings Groudon as the last again. Because Lunala I'm bringing Groudon's in, though, so, I mean, Snarl's yeah, is good, but... Hero Fumi at Top plays really good, but... Fini's right still a full HP. kind of doesn't want to go up against Pokemon that hits so hard. Yeah, you can get a Snarl off. Yeah, you can get a foul play off, but... Naoto basically still has his top Fini very heavy. I agree with every play Hero Fumi's making. I don't think he's played poorly. It's just that Naoto is putting on so much offensive pressure and managing the offense so well that it's just like, it feels so hard to deal with. Hero Fumi's restricted Pokemon in Groudon and the Ultra Necrozma are so low. Any attack at this point will basically finish them off. And for Naoto, his goal is basically to attack around the Umbreon. Yeah, Umbreon is annoying to deal with. And it's all my friends. Oh, 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 oh. When I say all my friends are dead syndrome, I'll reference that a couple times. Um... This is what it is. This is exactly what it looks like. He's ignoring the Umbreon. He's targeting the partners. 
what happened last game? He ignored Umbreon until the very end, and then when he had a fish, like one, the shot to one shot, he took it. But yeah, like you don't really want to he's basically ignoring it because he doesn't put on offensive pressure. Umbreon's partner, and of course for Hero Fumi Zen, probably wants to prioritize protecting whatever is next to Umbreon just to get some extra attacks off right now. But I think Nyoto has played this game really, really well so far. Yeah, he's playing this. Oh, Lunala stays in. Really well right here, saving huh. that Fumi for later on as the crowd on, on Hero Fumi's side switches out. Doesn't want to get Mix. KO'd yet. Oh, not Hero Fumi sends out uh, his. He had Mence too. Oh, it was Dual Mega. Oh, there was Talon. Oh, then forget what I said earlier. Both players had Talon and Mence. Oh. Okay. Okay. Own Salmon here with an Intimidate onto that one. I'm not going to matter too much. The Intimidate. What's the Nala doing? Though? On that Salmon, depending on if it does know okay. double edge or not. As Lunala protects itself, doesn't want to take a foul play Hyper from voice? the Umbreon end. Here is a Hyper Voice, just going for consistent threat damage here. Doing good damage to that Probably Salmon. foul play. I don't at that Umbreon, wow. And there is that, uh, looks Ooh. like it's, no, just a foul play right into that Lunala slot. Oh. Yeah, no, I think oh. Colberberry is still active, so he has to go for foul play in order to get the KO. I definitely thought Feeny was going to switch in there, but um, chooses to stay in with, with um, Necrozma. I with Lunala. I don't mind it, but like... It's, it's, you're getting so close to the point where every Pokemon except for Umbreon's in Hyper Voice range, and then uh, Ment's Feeny just wins. So, so have missed the yeah, there's a lot of damage coming out every so turn. That's obviously a unfortunate, that's unfortunate miss. That's a bad miss. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But uh, oh, what's not? Uh, Nyoto in a great position still. I mean, doesn't get knocked out by the foul play. Gets a lot of free damage off against the opposing Salamence. And I think once again to reiterate, his strategy is basically to target around the Umbreon. If you all do my damage, are dead to it, he'll just be able to heal it all the way back up. So Hyper Voice definitely a great spread move. Gets a little bit of chip damage onto Umbreon, but more importantly, also here Fumi. No longer has switch into hyper voice, everything will faint and in the back, everything should go down to hyper voice, except maybe if he snarls the ments and then, yeah, maybe he survives then. But the opposing yeah. partner, of course, now the Salamence is intimidated, so potential double edge won't do very much damage. But Anayoto basically just needs to conserve that top of Feeny, leave it for the end game to deal with the Umbreon, and he will be able to knock I honestly might like to see Mence protect so. here. And of course, Moonis be meant to be opposing Mence if yet, you're and if it is that Groudon, we'll be able to put on a lot of pressure. Oh. You're probably wanting to reset that attack Feeny, from, from the intimidate switching out, and uh, top of Feeny actually coming in because it can take attacks from the opposing Salamence decently well. Yeah, and Salamence on Hero Fumi's side switches out as well, saving that Intimidate for later, and the ground on takes the kill, but it is so heavily damaged right now, any attack will even be able to get the KO. I don't mind the switch here, like, Groudon slower than a lot of, um, Naruto's Pokemon, and it's at such low HP, like, it, it doesn't really matter if it's around, but, like, you may as well uh, sack it at some point, and there's, the now it's fine. The turn. How is this turn gonna play out? Lunala, oh, wide guard. Wide guard, preventing oh. a possible snarl, so, oh. great defensive, uh, move right there to prevent oh. snarl, but here's a foul play from that Umbreon into that top of Fini. a <laughs> critical Brit. hit, not gonna matter much at all, or maybe, because of top of Fini's yeah. low attack stat. So, yeah, I definitely... I like the wide guard there. He goes for a wide guard, not because he cares if Lunala goes down necessarily, but because, um, because, 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 um, he doesn't want Feeny to get snarled. He really wants this Feeny to beat the Umbreon, and so, yeah, he really does not want Feeny to get snarled. He knows Ments most likely will attack, so, uh, or, or if it's attacking, it probably won't double-edge his Ments, and it most likely will play defensive, because I think the obvious play from Naoto's end would just to, like, go for Hyper Voice Moonguys Beam or protect Moonguys Beam into Ments. Those plays were fine, but I really like this kind of aggressive switch here, getting Feeny back on the field. I really like the attempt there by both players. I think Wide Guard pretty much preventing the Snarl meeting leg. Now you do get the top of Feeny out. You've got the Tailwind up. You've got the Fairy Z pressure off against the Umbreon and nothing in the back of the team likes to take any Fairy type attacks. I mean, it's the uh, Ultra Necrozma. Yeah, Necrozma everything goes down to Z like, Moonblast in the back. Uh, the Moonblast just do super effective damage off against everything. Halunala, of course, can just go for a Moonguy's Beam off into the opposing Groudon slot. So, Anayoto has... This is another... Sorry, now I'm pausing a lot, but I think it's important. Um... This is another situation where not taking a KO, I think, is really good. Uh, not, like, leaving Groudon on the field. Um, I mean, I guess I guess they probably would just protect next turn anyway, but um, I think leaving Groudon on the field is actually pretty nice here because you just... I mean, Tailwind, I think, is still up. I'm, I might have lost count, but I think it has one more turn left. But, um, yeah, basically, like, both your Pokemon are faster than the Pokemon they can KO outside of Trick Room. And, like, the other thing is that Umbreon, like, it's in a really awkward spot here because, of course, like, it wants to switch so that it can burn the C-move. But number one, how are you ever gonna beat the Feeny? And number two, if you they if if um Naoto just goes for Moonblast into Umbreon and you switch, then like you, you lose one of your Pokemon in the back. So Full offensive I don't know if Umbreon can the afford to switch. Is, here. Does he want to commit the Z move and does Hirofumi maybe expect him to not go for the Z move, maybe take the Moonblast and go for something like a snarl? However, I mean, regardless, I think Naoto really has a lot of control right now. Are there any protection? Oh, no, just no help at all. Lunala uses Moon Geist being here. I agree with not protecting, but I don't think it's going to work. Does target down that ground, gets the KO. 
critical hit again that did not matter at all top of Fini now gets to make a move and it is a oh, oh, lord oh connecting such a great that umbreon no skulls at all we've seen it do so much damage to that umbreon already and this might be two quick knockouts for Nayato here what a game that i mean is. in theory it's not over top of Fini is out on the field at the right time both games so far, mm. being able to deal with this Umbreon yeah, attack so otherwise over. give Naoto such a bad matchup here. And there goes Umbreon, a big knockout there. And now Naoto is only two KOs away from becoming the world Someone champion ends. here, Aaron. Yeah, he hasn't even shown his last Pokemon. I feel like he has played this game perfectly. Right from the get-go, amazing lead. He's actually calling the Umbreon lead there, putting on so much pressure. And uh, a lot of how he's played this game is kind of methodical, right? You kind of distribute damage around. You don't just go for big knockouts because the team is uh, quite a bulky team. So kind of chip away, get a Nature's Madness off here, do a little bit of Hyper Voice or Moon Guys. The reason this isn't over is because in theory, you could have something like Ments go for a Hyper Voice Kale Lunala or a Double Edge Kale Lunala and then Necrozma go for Z... Uh, light that burns my, I mean, the sky, <clears throat> light that burns the sky. Um, and if you do that, then you threaten chaos in both Pokemon, then maybe you're meant to into speed tie. Um, you get Tailwind up, like maybe it's possible, like if you have Tailwind up or if you, you go for, you know, you make a call correctly, you hyperverse earth power, kill a Groudon. Um, or, you know, if you think that Lunal is going to wide guard, maybe light that burns the sky into Feeny and Tailwind to ensure speed control. Um, so it's not, it's not guaranteed over here, but it's definitely, like, your Pokemon are both weak to Feeny and they're both low health. Or, like, Ments isn't low health, but Necrozma certainly is, so, yeah. And the key thing is, that eventually, you put yourself into a position where you can just... But neither player's the Dynamax, it's so... It's still not we'll over, of course. Hero Fumi has two very strong Pokemon here in the Mega Style Ments and the Ultra Necrozma. Tapu Fini has committed its V-move, of course, doesn't have a way to recover. If the opposing Style Ments, of course, has something like Hyper Voice, could definitely go for that. But you do have to watch out for, of course, the... Uh, wide guard that we saw revealed and so Tapu Fini is obviously very very good against these dragon type Pokemon I think Nyota might want to try to bait out the Z-move from the Ultra Necrozma maybe go for a protect here on Tapu Fini uh, he still of course has two Pokemon in the back one of them being that Salamence yeah as Salamence on Hero Fumi's side Mega Evolves now getting that air laid ability and here we okay go. I like and a defensive play but it could definitely backfire doesn't want to take a possible uh, like that first guy the sky. from the oh, double edge, okay. uh, Ultra Necrozma over on the inside. And there's a double edge from that Mega Salamence connects with that Lunala and gets the KO. So Hirofumi clawing back here. Does he commit the Z move? Oh, there yeah, he is. That was a good he predict. Does. That's a very, very big bait there. Being able to get that out means that. I think you needed to go for Tailwind that turn, um, personally, because now Mence comes in, and how do you beat Mega Mence It's a lot more point? difficult for Hero for me to just get an effective one-hit KO here on the top of Fini, so very, very nice protect there. Uh, it was a really, really tough mind game, I think, from both players then, but Nyoto definitely getting the better end of the trade, I think, had... Uh, Hirofumi called it correctly. Uh, he'd actually still not be in the worst of positions, but Nyoto having an early lead, kind of running away with it, and... Oh, wait! I think that might copyright my video. Hang on. Skipping the Z-move. Top of Fini, so it probably does not invest too much in bulk. Although, you know, Top of Fini. Sorry, it did, it did attack through protect. So, so that's what happened. Guys are, I think there's a copyright on Light the Burns Light the Burns Sky. So now he um, tries to see how he can easily close this game out and win this World Championship title here. Yeah, that was close, Hero everybody. Fumi, I think there's copyright. The oh, yeah, I hope I don't get copyright claim that I edit that part out. Maybe I'll just do it anyway. With uh, Groudon coming in here. Groudon not meant. The main um, thing here is that we've seen that this Groudon, Groudon actually Groudon carries meant. that Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw actually will be able to just get a knockout onto either of these Pokemon. I thought Mentor coming in here, but here I was wrong. The thing here is that, like, for example, you won't be able to just knock out both Pokemon here. I think Nyoto most certainly I guess, to be fair, like, you need to you need to double into your Pokemon to take a knockout. So something like Fire Punch plus Moonblast, um, it's probably a guaranteed win, so yeah, this is probably fine. For, Don't example, go for a speed like tie. Edge on the top of Fini, but then the Photon Geyser won't be enough to knock out the Groudon, so maybe you hope for a Hyper Voice critical hit, but no, double it's just the double edge. And then Earth Power crit is what you have to go for, but... Oh, it actually KOs. Wait, hang on a second. Now, what is this ultimate if Earth Power like crits... Be able to do to this Groudon here, or is Groudon just going to be able to deal the deal here for Naoto? Here's the Earth Power, is the critical hit! How much damage does it do? How much damage, Groudon hit! On! Oh, if that had crit, this could have gone differently. Defense drop right there as Groudon now moves here. Uses fire pot. Oh no, the dragon call connects with that ultimate Cosma and gets the KO. So so close to knocking out the Groudon there. And yeah, that Earth Power KO's game is different. Allows it to survive, and now it is a two v one. 
match yeah. one. I mean, Nyoto, he had just needed to get one knockout here. Salamence comes out still so healthy. very, very healthy. There is pretty much no way here, I think, for Hirofumi to be able to win this one. Even a Hyper Voice critical hit won't be enough to get a knockout. Oh, Mens is full HP. I take it back. Mens is full HP. I didn't realize that. No it. critical hit comes out. The last turn of the game, most likely, and there is a Hyper Voice. From the it was close. Here, Both these the games are really close. Ground, but here comes Nyoto Salamence with an attack. Here's a double edge. And Nyoto Mizobuchi is your 2019 Pokemon Video Game World Champion. Queen 2-0 set. What an exciting set between both. And that's it. That's how Umbreon almost won the World Championship. So I think it's pretty clear after watching this that like... It should be pretty clear, I think, that this is a very close set. In my opinion, it definitely could have gone either way. A couple things, like, Game 2 felt more um, in control than Game 1. But even still, like, you saw, like, an Earth Power crit, which, you know, happens sometimes, could seal the game. Or if Groudon had a little bit of shift damage on it beforehand, or, I don't know, like, if Feeny was a little lower, so Hyper Voice Earth Power could have been the play. Of course, if those things were different now, it would have played differently. I think it's worth noting, but... Um, yeah, like, I do think that it's it was a very, very close set. And maybe you can understand why. Even though it was a 2-0, it's one of my favorite world sets, because... I think both players just played really, really phenomenally. And again, even though it was a 2-0, it could have been a very different story, I think. Um, I just think Naoto managed the Umbreon especially well. Um, because it was a huge problem for his team. He, he pretty much had Feeny and nothing else for it. Um, and it was probably telling him to use the Z-move both games to take it out. So um, he kind of had one shot with that one. But yeah, really, really excellently played. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you like this kind of content. I haven't done a kind of a reaction video to um, some VGC content in a while, so let me know if you like it. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. Um, okay, that's all I have to say. Goodbye.